And welcome back to Talking Lead, episode 98. We are at the Tactical Response Century Arms, uh, what do you call this thing, YouTube um, Gala for your release of your new products? Is that what we're is that what we're doing, Jacob? Yeah, that would be the, you know. Is there an official having, name for yeah, this thing? Yeah, it's the Century YouTube Media there you go. Gala event. <laughs> There thing. you go. I yeah, like well, that. Yeah. You know, we had the new products come out, and we were we were thinking, um, how are we going to get these in front of all these YouTube guys? Because we're massively pushing towards a, you know, overall January at least for a lot of these products. Mm-hmm. And uh, getting those products to all you guys in such a short period of time is just a, a nightmare. So it was easier right. just to get everybody. How can you get them all here. at one right. time in everybody's hands? And the ammo, we brought like 15,000 rounds of ammo. You brought a Load ammo. I want to know why you guys didn't interview two people in front of me where I could be on episode 100. Thanks for that. I hey, it's it. still coming up. Yeah, I know. I feel like I should come back. Yeah. See, yeah. no, what they're going to do for episode 100 because if we end up with an AK. Maybe you could. <laughs> you should you send me an email. We'll get you an AK. Okay. Oh, I'm not in. This where one. were you going? No, you were going with something. Yeah, you were talking. You, you were getting. Yeah, ready to what make they're going to do for episode 100 is since they're on the same number as we are, we're on 97 as well. We're going to be collaboration for like a joint so, thing. Yeah, so you're like a joint, it. yeah. Collab- we're in it. Can I? Can Another I come collaboration. Up? Is that going to be filmed in Alabama, Lower Alabama? There. I don't, I don't know, know where that's going to happen. I, it'll probably be on the. I don't even know if it's true or not. I feel like actually, I idea. should be there for that. I think so. I, we yeah. we want to have like like a big gala like you're having here and have a whole bunch of people. But without can the, we wear with, tuxedos without the gay tuxedos. You know, I'm thinking maybe fireman suits, like uh, tuxedo t-shirts, like Miller yeah, White, you, go, yeah. you know, it'd be yeah. great, yeah. absolutely, yeah, yeah. That that would be maybe it happened in Vegas. I don't. know. I wish that everybody could see where we're sitting because of the beautiful wood paneling in this room. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. So can can I interject? And all and all the gear, of course. Please, Mar- Marty, rocket left hand. Can I interject? Yes, um, go ahead. Uh, what's different about this media event that Century Arms is doing is that they bring the guns and they actually let us test them. They got dirty. We were testing them. They got stomped they on. They got us thrown. Shoot their <laughs> ammo. And what usually happens is you come to these events and the vendor tells you how amazing their product is, and they don't listen to what you have to say. And However, there's no ammo. Yeah, exactly. Well, <laughs> even if there is. But uh, what Century Arms is doing is they're getting feedback from people that actually use the guns, people that actually have ran them through the test, and they He's get actually the actually sitting here watching us do it. Exactly. So and, yeah. if, if we experience a problem, they're right there. We can say, hey, this just happened. And they can uh, analyze it, assess it, find out what the problem is. Right. As far as I, I know, we haven't really had any huge issues, you know, as far Dude. as people running run, running some of the stuff. Did yeah, I- for, a, you know, Mookie jumped up and down on a gun in a mud puddle, you know, and then rolled around with it. I mean, every gun's going to have an issue if you pour it full of mud and then run it dry. But ha- right. how was that issue fixed? We, yeah, we but then it was fixed. You poured a, a bottle, bottle of water, water and poured on it. it on it. No yeah. lube, nothing. Yeah. Just bottle of water. Right. Yeah. Most most issues most issues you see on a gun range are either caused by uh, a magazine ammunition combination. Mm-hmm. Most of them are just user error. Right. I was saying the it's, operator. It's, yeah. It's, it's operator an, it's error. A, it's an operator function. Yeah, and that, and that's usually especially something like this. That's what the, yeah. what the issue is. Which is a failure to you know apply administrative tasks earlier which would be learning how to you know maybe reading the manual we mm-hmm. recommend we recommend people read their manual yeah it's pretty important stuff in there if you don't really know what you're doing they're there for a reason yeah if you don't really know how the bullets go in the magazine you should read the manual you really should take a class first nssf offers the first shots class we that's a big one you ever want to go to that first shots first shots yeah you guys not heard of that? It's like they take you through you the. About it. They take you through like NSSF, you know, because as a manufacturer, we support NSSF mm-hmm. and uh, the National Shooting Sports, Shooting Sports, Sports Foundation. Foundation. And uh, shot show. It's one of those things where you know you go, hey, I bought this gun and this box of bullets, and this is I've never put a bullet in a gun Which or comes saw first, a gun, the bullet or the gun with a bullet, <laughs> and I want to shoot this. So they yeah. offer a program for people. It's called First Shots, and yeah. they take them in and teach them the safety and, you know, don't point anything you don't – I mean, I'm sure that – I'm paraphrasing, but, you know, we don't point guns at anything we don't want to destroy. Right. And uh, then they show them how to load it, and then they shoot. They shoot. At they go the to end. town. Yeah. Yeah, it's the whole from, like, here's the gun. Yeah. This is a gun. So now you've got this. Now you need to go take Dude, that, these classes. Yeah, then, then you go, like, you know, 
they used to come to attack our spines and kick in doors and roll out of vehicles and right. play in the mud and live the dream. <laughs> Work your way up to that. Work your yeah. way up to that, yeah. Yeah. But you brought a lot of cool new product from Century Arms. That, yeah. Like you said, you're you're shooting for the first of the year. Some of it's out right now, right? Some of it's out right now. We're, yeah. yeah. We're shipping the C39 V2 right now, and uh, we're shipping the TP9SA currently, and we're shipping the RPK, the C39 RPK. Um, the RES 47, the stamped A cam gun, comes out you know January fifteenth, eighteenth, something like that. We ship right around Shot Show. Yeah, and the uh, um, tell tell the listeners the difference between stamped and milled. Uh, two pounds, <laughs> two pounds, a hundred dollars, right? You, no, you no, wanted more the, like the process, the in depth. <laughs> you know, like, you right. I, remember what I wish Jaeger we could said. take calls. I would give anything if we could take calls. We take calls. We could do this live, and you know, like Dave Ramsey. Yeah, feel um, free to send us your questions, and we will right. forward them on to Jacob. Um, yeah. Not many though, just like three or four. You know how they, like Dave Ramsey does it. Like we're gonna have. Yeah, Jake's, no, Jake. Jacob never used Dave Ramsey in our show. Um, as an the, example, no Dave Ramsey. No Dave um, Ramsey. Who else takes calls? Like the dude, the ba- <laughs> Booyah guy, the stock market guy, like yells and screams like Booyah. <laughs> okay. You know he yeah. takes calls. You talking but, about Mike Huckabee? Oh no, that wasn't Booyah. Yeah. No. Okay. But uh, the mill a mill gun's made from a solid piece of milled metal. It starts as a block. Where in our case, it's a it's an eleven pound square piece of ordinance grade steel and then you get a milling machine which for those that you don't know what a milling machine is like a really high speed big drill that Mm -hmm. follows blueprints and takes pieces of metal away until you have a receiver a stamped receiver which is the opposite of a milled receiver is a piece of flat sheet metal that's stamped into a form like the hood of your car is stamped the um you've got a big heavy like Stamp, yeah, it's basically. a stamp. It's a, like a die. Yeah, that makes you know, a, like, that makes an impression. I'm looking around the room, it makes like, a shape. This rifle case is stamped, like mm-hmm. you know, those aerosol spray cans are probably in some way stamped, like a battery stamp, like the end yeah. of your life. You know, they stamp it out, and it's yeah. a durable. You know, they've been the Russians started doing that fifty some odd years ago, and there's a hundred million rifles on the in the world today with a stamped receiver, so it really works out well. But the milled guns are exceptionally nice. Yeah, yeah. Now, another great thing about Century Arms line of, of firearms that are coming out is they are 100% American made. Yeah, America. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we decided to build AKs here in America. Um, and when we say. What a novel idea. Yeah, well, how strange. Huh. Um, you know, it, <laughs> there is no better skilled workforce on the face of the earth than, than American skilled workers. I mean, it's we have a, we have a way to build things here that. And we don't build a lot of stuff here. You know, America's not a manufacturing center like it used to be 50 years ago, but the stuff we build here is exceptional. It, it's better than you can get it anywhere else. And so we decided to do an AK, and which turned into an AK line here in the U.S. And when we do that, our uh, C39 V2, the RPKs, the RES-47, they're all built, manufactured. The parts are all manufactured, the wood, the screws, the pins, the... Uh, bolt carrier the trigger group everything's manufactured here in the united states and then all those 100 percent u.s manufactured parts are 100 percent fully assembled here in the united states mm-hmm. all of the assembly is uh done up in our facility in vermont by a very heavily you know veteran field uh workforce there right. in vermont yeah right so you brought uh six guns six what? guns yeah we had six the uh, amd 63 which is uh a hungarian uh former hungarian parts kit ak that we put on a milled receiver it's an underfolder rifle so we're mm. really really happy the way it turned out um and you it's know nice six, looking yeah. it's a beautiful gun the wood like on it's the, great yeah, i like i like the stock you got on it yeah it's a little folder stock it's nice. and that stock's really solid yeah it was that's solid, what i liked about yeah, it it's solid it wasn't those little flimsy that you think would, would bend if you, you know, right fell down on of it. all the parts kits on the market you know and century does parts kits we take we take uh, make guns for the american public they, they can't get here otherwise which would be like a hungarian ak style rifle mm-hmm. we take those parts and build them here using a mix of u.s parts and surplus parts but the hungarian parts are some of the nicest parts of any AK that's ever made because the tolerances are better. And so those AMC, those A, we call it an AK-63D, mm-hmm. are fantastic rifles, especially on the milled receiver. It's a little heavier. Right. So you don't get the rise. You don't get that bite in your shoulder from the underfolder. It's just a great, fantastic all That's what I was rifle. noticing on on all the, the AKs that we were shooting is the rise. You know, they, they were staying on plane. Right. I mean, we might have had a little, you know, kick to the right you know something like that but i mean that's to be expected but there was there was very little if any rise muzzle rise especially on the 
I was surprised on the RPK. I mean, the videos that we did that I was watching them back last night of the, the RPK and um, Squatch was shooting it, which he loves the RPK. Very little muzzle rise on that at all. Right. The RPK, you know, the seven six two by thirty nine round is a light recoiling round, and so when you couple that with a, a, a rifle like the RPK, which is a milled, heavy barreled, uh, semi automatic, you know, variation of the RPK light machine gun, you're not going to have a lot of rise yeah. at all. You know, it's just, the the gun absorbs that recoil, and on the AKs themselves, the way the recoil system, the way the springs work, they're just a low recoiling rifle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so we got the RPK. Yep. We just talked about it. The the C thirty nine V two, which is the the milled uh, under folder. AK. No. Here, here, oh, okay. The, this is one the sixty three D. The Hungarian sixty three D is the milled under folder. Okay. Then we have the RPK, okay. which is a, a milled receiver C thirty nine, which is our U S milled gun, yep. all U S parts. Our, this is the RPK version with the longer, the the heavier profile barrel. Yeah. Then we have the V two, which is a just like a semi automatic sporting rifle, mm-hmm. AK platform milled. Real quick interjection. Yep. If if you're listening to my voice and you don't have a C39, uh, get one because you're wrong. Yeah, no, they're awesome. Yeah, yeah, they're they're great guns. I don't have one. I need one. The next gun that you know were they were released basically here. You guys are really the first people to see it. Is the RAS 47, and the RAS 47 is our 100% manufactured and assembled rifle, our stamped AKM. And so it's the first one. It's beautiful. It's an amazing yeah. gun. We're building a stamped AKM rifle here in the U.S. Now, all those yeah, have, um, you've got a, a new trigger in those, is that right? Yeah, all those and rifles have the new Rack were, 1 trigger system. It was, a, it, was a really, it was a really soft trigger for an AK. Yeah, it's fantastic. It doesn't, it doesn't have any kickback bite to it. Um, so it's, nice reset. It's, it's not a modified full auto trigger. Yeah, it's it not is. a modified trigger. It's, it's, we built that trigger from the ground up as, as, to, as a, a part for us. You mm-hmm. know, We thought, hey, we needed a trigger, so we started with, hey, we need the hammer, the sear, the disconnector. We're going to design all these as a unit, a semi-automatic unit that's comfortable for the shooter, provides a smooth pull, a crisp break, mm-hmm. and the smoothest, uh, crispest break for an AK that you could possibly imagine. So in doing that, you created the... Rack 1 trigger. Rack 1 trigger. The Red Army Standard Rack 1 trigger. It'll go in any of the stamped AKs on the market, regardless of the brand or not. It's an AKM trigger. The Red Army Standard is, is kind of the, the yeah. brand that we're building under the... The RES rifle, so it's the Red Army Standard. We have Red Army Standard RES ammunition as we've been shooting, and mm. we're going to do the accessories under that, the drum mag, so the Red Army Standard drum mag, the, the RES Rack 1 trigger system. And that trigger can go in any r- rifle that is built within a spec. So mm-hmm. I can't speak for other manufacturers, but the guns we bring in, you can put the trigger in it. It'll be mm-hmm. a for-sale item that you can buy as an accessory. Now, you mentioned something uh, yesterday in the class that uh, um, was surprisingly good i guess and especially for you guys but you're, you're going to try to get into the big box stores is that right with these yeah well you can already buy our rifles in cabela's in cabela's in cabela's all the cabela's stores are the ones where it's legal mm-hmm. we have a you know you can buy the res will be there the c39 you can buy the NPAPs and the wassers there in cabela's already and we're working on some other stores some yeah. of the other you can buy maybe uh, academy rifles in, uh, yeah we'd love to be an academy yeah uh, we're working on that getting these u.s made guns in there we uh, have rifles in uh some of the farm and ranch stores. Mm-hmm. We have rifles in Dunham's. Um, so some Not of the stores I'm familiar with, obviously. Dunham's, I know Dunham's, Dunham's is Tennessee. Midwest. Yeah, Dunham's up Midwest. You know, Midwest. and so they're they're a pretty big outfit in the Midwest area. So mm-hmm. we're in there, and we sell. They sell AKs for us, and uh, so across Bass. The, Bass Pro Shop, we're not in Bass Pro Shop yet. Yeah, you know, they're they're very hunting oriented. They're a great store, but very they carry they, they carry the freaking ARs and all the yeah. Glocks and all that stuff too. I don't know why they wouldn't. So hopefully you'll be able too. to get the TP nine SA. You should you know if somebody wants a TP nine SA and they mm-hmm. shop at Bass Pro, they should go so in. We'll talk and request about the it. TP nine. TP nine SA. Yeah, yeah. It's our our new striker fired handgun. It's the second variation of the TP series pistol we brought in. Uh, the first TP series pistol super successful. The TP nine. SA is a single action striker fired. Still has a decocker, but the decocker, you know, helps in the takedown of the pistol. Mm-hmm. So you don't have to do any kind of funky trigger pull. It's trigger pull, slide manipulation. You don't have to use your fingernails. It's just it comes apart really easy. Yeah. So 18 round max. Just the push of the decocker. Just and push the decocker and pull the thing down, slide pops right off. Right. Super easy to take apart. If you got small hands or you're cold or bloody or wet, you know, it's you can still get that handgun apart. Yeah. Uh, you know, Two back straps, which are popular now for sizing. It's got a slim line grip, uh, but still holds 18 rounds. And a super durable gun that we really enjoy the design on that. 
also comes with the holster uh two two back plates for your holster uh, mag loader everything in the box and it's msrp of 399 wow yeah i think that's what makes those things so popular huh yeah, it, the price point, and plus the quality. The price, the quality point, does, for the price, the price point. point does make it popular. I mean, you've got a gun that'll go head to head with any other semi-automatic striker fired pistol on the market, except it's a couple of hundred bucks cheaper. Yeah, you no, know, there's no reason to charge somebody, uh, you know, some exorbitant amount just because you can. You know, our goal is to put reliable, mm-hmm. combat-driven handguns on the market to the American people for a, a, a reasonable price. Right. Every single American should be able to buy a handgun that they can defend their life with and defend their family and shoot and use and be reliable but everybody should be able to afford that and 399 is a price point that 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 works at for most people yeah and then talking about the price points we go back to the rifles uh those uh, are very affordable and and the one on the uh we don't think we talked about the 308 we didn't talk about the 308 308 and the price point on it was very shocking to me the semi-auto 308 is a roller block design you know very hk-ish set me looking Mm -hmm. gun it has a it's, a it's a delayed roller block action. It takes HK ninety one slash G three magazines. It comes with two twenty rounders, a five rounder, and that gun is going to be six ninety nine. It's all black, that's, uh, five eight by twenty four thread yeah. pattern. Yeah, six ninety nine on retail. That's going to be awesome. You're going to be able to get, and it has the Amazing. the big part of that gun is that built in scope base. Mm-hmm. So you can put you know an EOTech, an aim point, uh, a vortex. If you got a vortex one by four and a throw lever, you can slap that right on top. Yeah, and it's a semi automatic hunting yeah. scope on there. Hunting scope, but it's a proven three hundred eight design uh, that's very very well proven all the world over. Reliable semi automatic. You know, not a hard recoiling gun. It is a you know the HX no, it wasn't. Style. It was it was it was like a pogo stick. But you'll be able to pick that it up. Felt like you a know, pogo stick for six ninety nine. It was. It felt very nice on the recoil for a three hundred eight too. I mean, I could. Yeah, it's cheap. I mean, it's not cheap, but you know. What I mean. No, it's it's a very good price. I mean, for three, you can't get a well. three hundred eight for that unless it's like a bolt or something. You know, bolt action. Yeah, you can get a hunting gun for like. Yeah, you know, for, se- for a semi auto three hundred eight. I mean, you can't there, beat that. There's thing. a difference between cheap and affordable. This yeah. gun is affordable. Super affordable. Yeah. Super affordable. So affordable that if you see one, you better buy it because. You're going to do a limited quantity. We quantity expect these, right? the price of surplus G3 mags to go up. Yeah, no doubt. But you are doing these in limited runs, right? No, we're going to make them every day, but there's only so many we can make. Okay. All right. You know, the, somebody will be building them, but, you know, th- that person can't build 10,000 a day. You know, it's right. a limited quantity per month. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. So, Jacob, there are yeah, me there. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. a series of questions that we ask every guest for their first time are on. Are any of the answers a unicorn? They very well could be. This is fantastic. They very well could be. Do you know? Do you know our questions? Flaming unicorn. Um, y- the first one is. I, you know, unicorn you asked heart me, rainbows. Do they That's really? where they come from. Yeah. Unicorn milk makes you happy and gun control existing, right? <laughs> okay. Yes. Anyway, um, I how don't did you remember get them? firearms? How did I get into firearms? Yeah, my really grandpa firearms? had a uh, bait and tackle store, uh, Sonny's Bait and Tackle in Smithville, Tennessee, when I was a little boy. Um, and if you ever fished on the the circuits there in Tennessee, you'd have went in there. It was the only bait shop there, and uh, big game checking station. And grew. I mean, I grew up. You know, all the deer coming in and shooting, and the the counter full of Winchester ammunition. Back then, all hunting ammo was. Winchester. Where did you say? In Smithville, Tennessee. Smithville, Tennessee. Yeah, big Smith Vegas center yeah, of the lake. I, I was born and reared in Sparta. Really, Tennessee. So you know, uh, <laughs> you're a Spartan. Yeah, I'm a my I granddad I bought his, all his trucks over at Ed Rogers. Ah, Ed Rogers, yeah, 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 yeah. Rogers Chevrolet, yeah. yeah. Bill Borf over there, yeah, and Borf. We bought all our Dodges at Borf. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I like them guys over there. Yeah, we we probably know some of the same people. I'm sure, I'm sure we do. That's it. Yeah. And then and then we found out yesterday also that you are uh, an, Blue Raider, Middle Tennessee State. Yeah, yep, MTSU baby. Yeah. Yeah, I was in a fraternity, so I think I had a better time than you did. I don't think so because I no. got to go to all the fraternities parties. No. <laughs> hmm. uh, yeah. But that's kind of how I got into it. You know, she grew, it grew up in the country, and everybody shot guns, and it was just a natural way of life. I mean, in Tennessee, every, every single person has a gun, and I didn't know people had gun safes. I didn't see a gun safe until I was a, an adult. Yeah, like, I didn't there even were know guns what that was. everywhere, and you just didn't touch them because our right. parents still they taught you, you know, took a belt to you, it. right? Yeah. And it was completely normal. That's the way it should be. But well, that's child abuse now. So yeah, that's what I've yeah. heard. It's kind of strange. Yeah. So that's kind of how I got into guns, and I showed up at Tactical Response one day when I was like eighteen, and and it went from there. And so I just decided to be. I was going to be a commodities broker. I went to school for ag business. Mm. 
and I started working at Chris Barrett's gun store, the Outpost. Yeah, and uh, we've had just, Chris on the show. Yeah, and went working from Chris and worked for uh, ammunition company, and worked for some other manufacturers, and landed at Century. And it's and everything else is a legend, man. You know, it's awesome. So you've got <laughs> you, you did all this. You studied in school. Um, you worked for all these companies. Did you ever have any military or law enforcement experience? I was a, a police dispatcher. Oh, really? you were the yeah, you were Farva. Uh, yeah, Farva. so not on us. So this is Farva. what happened. So I had a really good time in college in Rutherford right? County. No, no, dispatcher? in DeKalb County. Oh, in DeKalb. And okay. uh, one time I went to college, <laughs> and college decided my grades weren't up to par. College decided. The MTSU that. decided but that now, maybe I didn't. What make gives the grade. them the right to right, decide, decide my grades? Your grades. Yeah. So they told me that I, I was. They. Gonna, they were going to give me a semester off. Real <laughs> nice of them, right? I didn't like have paid? to show up. No, I, I didn't get to pay. You they, refunded? It, actually, they might not have put it exactly like that. Oh, I got you. I but, got you. Uh, you know, I didn't get to go that semester, so I needed a job. So I was a, a police dispatcher, like 911, like, what is your emergency? And this voice, yeah. so it tell soothed us, people. Well, at least they didn't threaten to kick you out because of behavioral. No, I was never there to behave bad. <laughs> When do tell us the, I got the best to get, story, the I best nine one one stories that we were asking. Yeah, do we have time Someone for that? called one day and asked yeah. asked to send a deputy to help birth their goat. They felt the goat was in labor, and they needed a deputy to come assist them. This is in Did you say I'll get them right I sent them right out, out there. There was a deputy. Right there, there was a deputy working that kind of got on my nerves sometimes. <laughs> so I sent him a deputy right out there to assist in that goat birthing. Get right on that. Yeah, get right on that. Yeah. So, what would you say the uh, the ratio is, or the the average? goat birthing is in, in Smithville. Well, if a deputy, For a deputy comes on the scene, it's a 100% success rate. Yeah. We're proud of that. Yeah. So so no fatalities on... on right, so you're the still representing the, the, <laughs> the PD? No, no. I, I, I didn't work there for since I was a young man, but I think that was the only time a deputy had to go help birth a goat. <laughs> so that was the one and only time the goat lived from go, what 100%. I remember. And so yeah. it's like Barney right. did on Mayberry one right. time. But that was made up. But so when it comes to pop culture, uh-huh. what is your go to, whether it be a video game, a movie, a book, T V show that's gun fighting st- related. That's gunfighting related. Man, I love related. I love listening to Marty Robbins on record. Marty Robbins. Marty Robbins, you know, the El Paso, uh-huh. like, you know, the big iron on his hip. Yeah. You know, I love listening to Marty Robbins on, there with my cell phone. I didn't need that as it hit the floor and <laughs> cracked. So I love listening to Marty Robbins. Uh, I listen to that on record, listen to a lot of records. Yeah. And uh, as far as, you know, play Call of you're, Duty. You're like too every young other. to listen to records. Oh, no, man. Does your apartment, being from Smith, I say what? Does your apartment have many leather-bound books? It does. And, and it does. I have mahogany. a leather couch, and I have records and human door. And, does your dog talk to you? I wish I have a black lab that lives with my mother, like a like a, a child of a divorcee or something. Like you know, the dog has to go live with mom. Yeah, he's gonna stay um, with mom. Does he fetch beer? No, that dog doesn't do a lot except eat and annoy my mom. Oh, he's a good boy. Yeah, it's a girl dog. She eats She's all the apples off the tree. But um, <laughs> all dogs are boys. All no, cats I listen. Are girls, to, you know, yeah. Marty Robbins, El Paso. If I'm gonna watch like a gun movie, like a firearms movie, it's you know, if I'm gonna sit and watch one, it'd probably be like. Uh, I'm guessing it's probably going to be like a Western type. Yeah, like I like Top Gun. Josie Wells or something like that. Big fan of Top Gun. Top Gun? I feel like it's one of the most you epic say, you, movies you ever know, made. You yeah. know where you're at? I feel the need. You know where you're the at? The need for speed. Okay? Um, <laughs> you better watch what you're saying. No, I, James Yeager and I get into it all the time about Top Gun. I feel like Top Gun's one of the I finest had, films ever to be shown well, on you know, the movie. I had my ringtone to Top Gun. Room. Yeah, to I love Danger it. Zone. Highway to the so, Danger Zone. Yeah, Highway, it's great. Yeah, Kenny Loggins. Kenny Loggins, the only song I ever knew he about heard Kenny that. Loggins. <laughs> he turned blood red. <laughs> the, uh, you know, I play Call of Duty, but I work a lot. You know, pop cultures, you know, I guess, like, I listen to a lot of gangster rap. And gangster the car ride. rap. Yeah, they always talk about guns and gats and, mm-hmm. you know, got that got that 45 clip, so I listen to that. Um, but, no, I don't have a lot of time to play video games and stuff. I, I work too much. Arming America is a busy job. It is. You know, it selling is. freedom is a 24-7 commitment. And it shouldn't be. You're it should this. be. We want people to like no, no, embrace. No, no, what I'm saying is, it shouldn't be so hard to sell it. Lord oh, of it's, War. It's, it's, it should be a 24 hour sale. It is job. a 24 yes. hour job. Yeah. What's the other question? I feel like it's um, two. Do you own any guns that you are ashamed that you owned or have owned? Maybe just a little bit of you. Wouldn't want to like admit even to your own pinky. It. Or your, your, your little are you one of those like I never buy a gun? I'm not ashamed of. I love them all, man. You know, I had one of those. Uh, Good answer. I had one of those uh, 
one of those 410 back when I was, I don't know, I was like probably 16, 17 years old, something like that. If one of those 410 Derringers may, of dubious quality. Yeah. That as I got older, I was like, hmm. Questionable whether you really wanted to shoot Questionable whether you wanted to shoot it, that, that 410 Derringer that as you learned what metal production looked like was cast. Mm-hmm. So it had to go along its merry way and, uh, you know, but there for a while, I towed it a Bursa, and I loved it. Everybody like, you carry a Bursa? Man, that's a nice gun. It shoots every time, doesn't it? Shoots every time. Yeah, that's all that matters. Tried to buy a Show Show one time. You know, Show Show, uh, yeah, 8mm LaBelle, and I was like, man, I, I can't buy a Show Show. Like, people come over and make fun of me, like, with this gun that, that since its inception in every history book says it doesn't work. Well, see, uh, but the difference <laughs> between show you show. and... and uh, Just the name alone. I yeah, think. Show right. Show. The difference between you and a lot of people that carry guns is you don't carry it as a extension to your penis, so you don't care what it is. That's true because you yeah. know you're you're saying you know, somebody asked you and they're like you know what's your preference? You, without hesitation, you rock Bursa. You yeah, I know. Bursa. It annoys you people. Bursa I carry guns at work as long as I can put bullets in it, and pull the trigger, and it goes bang every time I carry it. Now, obviously, now I carry TP9 to work for Century, and, but the thing is, it's a great gun. You, we don't sign up to work for the company like, oh, you must carry. Yeah, the you know you can carry whatever you want to, and uh, the TP9 is a great gun. You know, there's a lot of great guns out there as long as they go bang every time you pull the trigger, and to go bang every time you pull the trigger, you need to put 500 rounds through one. Mm-hmm. You know, in a training class. You know, going to the going to the range, popping six rounds through it, and be like, "Oh yeah, that works real nice, dude." I just I, this is how you figure out if a rep really believes in their gun. If you uh, and, and encounter a sales rep for a gun company and they're selling you a pistol, um, ask them if they are carrying that pistol right now on them. And if they say yes, then I would probably trust that gun. I have I have it on. I yeah. had three on yesterday. But now you can't right. always gauge that as because you know the person that they're selling to, if they're a good. Um, I had a I'm not gonna say salesman, but too. if they're you know if they're a good gun rep, they're gonna analyze the person and what their needs are and what their personal needs are, and what that guy's carrying may not be what that person needs to be carrying. Right. Yeah, I don't sell yeah. pocket right, 380. I'm, not, I'm, so. I'm saying, but that, I understand what you're saying. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Like I don't sell pocket 380. If you're like, hey, I want a single stack itty bitty 380, I'd be like, go get LCP or right. Bursa. You yeah. know. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But no, there's a lot of good guns out there. You know, as long as they go bang. Yeah, but I care. You know, I was an AK guy. I've been you know, toting AKs for years. So when I was like, go to work for Century, I was like, you know, I had one. They didn't have to issue me one. I had. Yeah. I had. This bunch. year has been kind of my acclimation to the AK. Or it's the year of the AK, like year of dragon. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, up until I uh, went to Colorado, I really hadn't had any experience with with, with AKs. Never owned one. Uh, but I'm, you know, I'm. I had a more cousin that lived in a teepee in ta- Colorado for like seven years on the side of the road. Teepee in? Yeah, no, he lived in a teepee. Like, in a teepee on the side of the road. Yeah, this white dude with a beard lived in a teepee. Is he from Sm- but, Smithville also? Yeah. yeah. How did he find his way to Colorado? I have no idea. But I, you, when you said Colorado, it brought that up. <laughs> um, no, but it is the year of the AK. Everybody's AR'd out, man. AKs are the way, the way I, to go. I'm, and they I'm work. still not AR'd out, but I'm, I'm getting more intrigued with the AK. So that's three questions. What's the other two? No, that was more than three. Oh. So the next one is, was that three? Next one is, is there a gun that you used to own that you wished you had back? Yes. Yes, it hurts my soul. <laughs> what is it? There's two guns, actually. Uh, one was my first FAL built on an STG parts kit and an Embo receiver. It's a beautiful gun. Should never got rid of it. Uh, missed that gun. Miss it to this day. It was a good gun. Why did you get rid of it? Man, you know, I was like, I got to get AR. That's back when you couldn't really get AR. And I, FALs were 350 bucks a piece, and yeah. ARs were not. And So I found some idiot to trade me AR. I've still got the AR. It's in its ninth or tenth reincarnation. But oh, that's um, good. Missed that FAL. And I, I, I sold a buddy of mine. I had a 1917 Smith 45 ACP revolver uh-huh. with a bobbed hammer and a high-vis front sight that you shoot bowling pins with in the 60s. <laughs> and it had, they had bobbed the barrel off to like three inches. And uh, it was a square butt. Somebody had changed the, uh, the uh, grip frame the out grip on, on it. it yeah. And it was the coolest gun. And I, you know, I... I'll get it back, but I sold it to a buddy of mine. He's had it. So t- you know who's you know where it's at. You we've track we've it swapped it twice, cool. back and forth to each other. So it comes back. It's like a an ex girlfriend you never want to get yeah. rid of. It'll eventually come back home. It's like a savings account. You know, it's over yeah. there. You- Besides that, I don't get rid of a lot of guns. I don't. You know, I just kind of yeah yeah. I there. I don't get rid of a lot of them. When I buy one, I'm making a dedication. Uh, do you have any any guns? Uh, what's your bucket list gun or a gun that you want? What's, Probably what's a Solothurn eighteen hundred. No price, no yeah, laws. A Solothurn. 
I live in Tennessee, so we're NFA friendly. Yes, we are. So I want a uh, (laughs) probably my next, you know, and I've got, I mean, I've always got a list of stuff inbound, like, you know, like I bought this, bought that. My next, I either want a uh, a Maxim, like a a water cooled Maxim, probably a Russian or a Finnish gun. Uh, you know, nineteen sixteen, nineteen seventeen Maxim. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if I get a Maxim, I want one like pretty much tricked out on the cart, like the whole deal, mm-hmm. or a solo there an S eighteen hundred, which is a twenty millimeter anti tank rifle. The Lottie, oh, the go. Lottie's yeah. a piece of crap compared <laughs> to a solo. There. A Lottie messes up your brass, so you have to shoot it like single action mode. It's really a semi automatic rifle. But the brass is, you know, around a twenty millimeter Lottie ammo, hundred bucks for good stuff. You remember the one we yeah. shot down in? That's the one you need to go. Yeah, you so need to get that I want one. the the S eighteen hundred, the solo mm-hmm. there. Would be pretty. Cool. I'm on board. You get that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that twenty mil. Um, you know, and that's Sweet. in. You know, that's kind of exotic, uh, kind of more realistic. Um, well, this is our unicorn question. Yeah, yeah. you know, probably, <laughs> probably the next. You know, nice gun I buy will be a. Uh, there's a French uh, rifle company, Verney Courant. So they make a they make a um, a man liquor uh, mountain rifle. Mm-hmm. And I'll uh, I'll probably get one of those in like a a six five suite or something. Oh, wow. but I just got a cool new bolt action. Got a Macmillan Dynasty. Oh, really? Which is real cool. That's There's awesome. Zeiss, Zeiss optics on it is a real cool. Huh, go ahead. What? Are you still on the radio? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, no, there's a question. Everyone is basically sounding her phone. Yeah, we're getting ready to finish. Oh, up, I so thought you, you guys were going to the range. Well, Chris is like, I don't think we're going back out the range. And I said, I think we're supposed to go back out the range. She's like, Well, I don't know. Yeah. We need to find out what Jacob wants to do. So the question that on everyone's tongue... If anybody, needs to go, if anybody wants to cut out, we're done, we're, right? We're, I'm going to finish up with them, and I'm going back to the yeah, range, too. Then we're going back to shoot some more. Yeah. yeah. Final you, you, final time to film, ask questions. When we get back out there is so the, the last... Yes, yes, the last shebang. Get all, Yeah. Yeah, cool. I thought they'd already left. I did, too. I did so too. Probably, <laughs> a, probably a Vernie Caron. You know, probably my What do those run? Ballpark. Four. Four thousand? Four dollars. Oh, okay. Four dollars. That's pretty good. That's a good deal. Okay. Thirty five hundred. It's hand built though. It's hand. It's hand measured. Round. Like like yeah. I'm going to do like six five sweet something like that. Um, so and, and four grand for a rifle. When you're talking about like getting it fitted, and they're building it for that's you. A decent price. That's, it's that's not. It's not ex- extravagant. You know, that's something yeah. you'll have. Hopefully, if I ever have kids, they'll be as big as I am because the gun will be, be made for somebody that's six foot four. Yeah, it'll be an airline. Yeah, and but that McMillan prodigy. That's a nice piece. That prodigy's a. You, you I can't remember if I got the Dynasty or the, the Prodigy. They all look the same. The stock's different. I got the one, the, the straight stock, so the Monte Carlo stock. What stock. caliber did you get? 300 Magnum. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's my sheep gun. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's real nice. I, like I got that I got that Zeiss scope on it. It's pretty cool. I usually run Vortex. I run almost exclusively Vortex optics on all my like fighting rifles and uh, sniper rifles. And you know, I'm not a sniper. What do you call precision rifle now? But yeah. um, on a hunting gun like that, I run it. I run that Zeiss. Uh, Conquest Five is, is real. Is cool. there a, a reason you use Vortex? I, I re, those boys over at Vortex are, are great. A eh? like if if I'm behind a piece of glass, them dudes over at Vortex are are squared away individuals, especially on the That's tactical side. I've been running Vortex now four or five years. Um, their one by fours are their one by fours are fantastic one by fours stacked up against the other high end one by four competition. They they're running right there with them. You try uh, their one sixes. I've yet? got their one six. I've, I I like the one six. I run yeah. them one by four. It's a little lighter, and I like the I like the the way it lights up. I like everything about it. Um, you know, I can I can have any scope I want. Okay. I've run Leupold, Schmidt Bender, all that, and I run a Vortex. I like it. I like them guys. Seamus over there's a great guy. And uh, their mm-hmm. optics are fantastic. I've run it on everything. You'll I own. have to introduce us. Yeah, yeah, we'll introduce you. Yeah. Uh, the only, the, but they're tactical optics. You know, on my hunting, on my hunting gun, I, I've got a Zeiss hunting optic. Cool. It's, it's, that stuff set up differently. Right. So, Jacob, tell everybody how they can get in touch with uh, with you guys over at Century Arms, where they can find your. your the best way is on Facebook. You know, we do all our releases media. on Facebook. All our product releases on Facebook. You can tag us on Instagram. Um, you can just hashtag Century Arms because we don't have an Instagram account yet, but I'm working on that. Uh, Facebook's the best way to find us, Century Arms, and then we have a website, centuryarms.com. And links to your Facebook and all that are on your, your website there. I'm oh, yeah. Right now. So, yeah. So, you have guys. Have the new website up yet? Hold on. Can uh, I see? I don't know. Yeah. Check it out. This is the one I'm, I'm looking at here. Go up or down right here. Go all the way up. Nope. New website's not up yet. We've got a new website coming out for shop, but okay. you can go to Facebook, oh, centuryarms.com. There you go. Guys, check them out. 
Jacob, we appreciate you being on. Thanks. We All appreciate right. it. And uh, we're going to be doing more with these guys in the future. So Sweet. Be ready, Leadheads. <laughs>